In this video, Drew and I will be discussing the new documentary, Shiny Happy People, and how Christian influencers, specifically Paul and Morgan, were portrayed in this series. If you haven't seen Shiny Happy People yet, this documentary on Prime exposes the truth behind the Duggars, a Christian fundamentalist family known for their hit show on TLC and their various scandals. The series also exposes the Institute in Basic Life Principles, or IBLP, which is a religious nonprofit organization the Elder Duggars are a part of. The IBLP is a fundamentalist and authoritarian cult that routinely abuses its members, especially young women. I was really happy that they shed light on the larger organization behind the Duggars. I felt like this was something missing from similar documentaries, like the Hillsong documentary on Discovery+. Plus. In that documentary, Hillsong was almost made out to be an isolated case of church gone wrong, and there was no mention of the larger evangelical system behind this type of abusive church culture. Overall, I thought Shiny Happy People was an excellent documentary that gave a much needed voice to the victims of both the Duggars and the IBLP. My only criticism of the show is in how they framed the Christian influencers they featured. I know this might be a controversial take within the ex fundy community, but I felt like it was misleading. Paul and Morgan, who were actually flown out and interviewed for the documentary, did feel misrepresented and have since published a response video to their channel. Today, Drew and I will be reacting to their response video and sharing our thoughts on this whole situation. I want to make it very, very clear that Drew and I don't agree with much of what Paul and Morgan say on their channel and do believe they cause harm through the message they spread. We've made videos critical of them and will continue to criticize them. We'll even be criticizing them in this video. Our only goal is to demonstrate the lack of nuance when it came to discussing Christian influencers like Paul and Morgan. I also wanna be careful to not draw attention away from the importance of this documentary. Providing a space for victims to speak out against their oppressors is astronomically more important than getting everything correct about an influencer. So please, if you haven't watched Shiny Happy People yet, do so before you watch this video. But considering Paul and Morgan are already a trending topic in the ex fundy community, I think it's only fair that our opinion is voiced as well. All right, let's jump in. Just to give you guys a bit of a disclaimer before we start, um, we're not going to be watching their entire video because it's 40 minutes long and we'd be here for like three hours yeah. if we watched the whole thing. Um, so I've cut it down into different clips, but I will be put linking the whole video in the description down below um, if you guys want to check it out. Morgan, why don't you kick off this video? All right. Well, guys... <clears throat> Some people aren't gonna like this, but I am gonna read some notes that I took straight from my phone. And I know that some people won't like this because I've done this in the past and they're like, she's a fraud, she can't even just speak, she has to read from her phone. <laughs> but that's all right, this is very much from the heart. I prayed over what I was writing out. If you're commenting and bashing her for using notes, um, yeah. That's not cool. I would much rather she write down what she wants to say and have everything clearly spelled out rather than just kind of going off the top of her head. I mean, I have a bunch <laughs> of notes that I'm going to be reading from. I read off of a teleprompter for most of my videos. Yeah. So, yeah. so don't be bashing her for that. That's really stupid. People nitpick them about really weird yeah. things when they could actually talk about valid things that... Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk more criticism. about that. <laughs> This is from the heart. So I wanted to make sure that I said it well and said it right. So here we go. Awesome. And throughout the video, we're going to be jumping down and, and looking at our notes. You know, we have a, a we got lots of notes. We got a lot to say. This is this is going to be a packed video. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So we want to start out first saying we do believe that there has been serious wrongdoings in the IBLP. Um, we believe that they deserve to be brought to light. We believe people need to be held accountable for taking God's word and twisting it twisting it for their own power and their own gain um, uh, and using it and abusing it. The women and children and men who have been seriously damaged forever um, and scarred and lied to deserve to heal and find peace in all of this mess. We believe that anyone 
who tries to use the word of God to manipulate and control people will be held accountable, maybe in this lifetime, but most certainly in the next lifetime when they meet their maker. Um, God is the king of justice. He is the ultimate judge, and we believe justice will be served for these people who have been hurt by men and women who have used and abused the word of God. I'm really glad that they started off the video by saying that. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like, you know, instead of just going into how they feel like they were misrepresented, they started off with saying, yes, abuse did happen and it was awful and we don't support that. Yeah, and it should, they're even saying it should be called out. I mean, there, there mm -hmm. are some Christians who are like, oh, well, you know, like abuse does happen and things like that. But they, they get very standoffish about that ever being called out because they don't want anything bad associated with Christianity. So, no, they're doing the right thing and saying this is terrible and it's a good thing to expose this stuff. Yeah. So, good. We're going to share our thoughts and experiences with this docuseries and we've got a lot to say. So buckle in. Yeah. This is a deep dive. Seriously, go ahead and, yeah, <laughs> if your popcorn's not popped, just <laughs> grab a quick snack to be snacking on something to drink. <laughs> oh. No time. Goodness. There's no time to pop popcorn though. Oh, right. No time. Um, all right. So I want to start out with talking about this docuseries. Um, we believe that this docuseries and many alike, like the Secrets of Hillsong on Hulu, the Discovery Plus one on uh, Hillsong, and many others, all have a purpose, which is to reveal the wrongdoings of these churches, these people, etc., which is not a bad purpose. But here's where I feel like they all completely fail because they're made by people who are not christians who maybe even have a vendetta i kind of wonder how she knows it was made by people that aren't christians i mean did the producers say to them oh hey we're not christians like how does she know that or is she just assuming that right yeah Data against Christianity, every single one of these docuseries has some major problems. One being, they almost never interview people who are still firmly walking in faith with the Lord. Or, if they do interview those people, um, like they interviewed us, they do not allow them to share that faith or where they're at now. Uh, a couple problems I have with that there is that they're just making a, they're making a theological distinction in order to say that the mm -hmm. people who are interviewed are not firmly walking in faith. In reality, I think most people in the Hillsong documentary, at least the one that I saw, and the majority of people that were interviewed, you know, like victims that were interviewed in uh, the Shiny Happy People documentary, were Christians. Oh, yeah. They're just yeah. not, they're not Christians in the same camp as Paul and Morgan or... Yeah, I mean... I, I'm not sure exactly how a lot of the people would describe themselves, but it was definitely clear that there were people that were still in the Christian faith. And the main couple that was interviewed, uh, Jill Duggar and her husband, I'm pretty sure they're version of Christianity is very similar to Paul and Morgan's and they yeah. were hev heavily featured in the documentary. So right. when they say that no Christians were interviewed, that's just not true. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's true according to their theological definition, but like not everybody sticks to their, not everyone is doing theology in the first place and not everyone is sticking to their theological ideas. Yeah. So they're saying that from their perspective, they're, but from any other perspective, it's, they wouldn't see the same. They're basically way. saying, you know, they're, they're not real Christians. The other point is I kind of fail to see what the problem of not presenting the gospel yeah. the documentary is. I mean, the, the documentary is not meant to proselytize for Christianity. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean it's anti-Christianity. Or that they or, have a vendetta against Christians. Yeah, just because they're not sharing the gospel. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. It, and yeah. They even described, like Morgan was saying, the goal of the documentary was to expose abuse that happens in churches. So the aim of the documentary wasn't to proselytize for a specific faith and sharing the gospel would be proselytizing. It's not relevant to the documentary at all. Yeah. They don't allow the gospel to be shared and two being 
the other problem is they don't allow the gospel to be shared. These docuseries, um, this one specifically, made it very clear that not only people within the IBLP, the Institute of Basic Life Principles, but Christianity as a whole thing is wrong and the only true option is deconstruction. I think that Paul and Morgan don't understand the difference between deconstruction and deconversion. They seem to think that deconstructing your faith means leaving your faith altogether, and yeah. that's not what that means at all. I mean, there were definitely Christians that were interviewed for the documentary that were deconstructed. They had deconstructed elements of their faith, which a large part of that came from the IBLP. Yeah. Um, but yeah, deconstruction and deconversion are not synonymous, um, and I don't it appears like they don't understand that. When you can only define Christianity by your very narrow theological definition, then deviating from mm -hmm. that, even the tiniest bit, means completely leaving. Yeah. And so I think that's why they're not able to make the distinction. They won't get out of their theological lens. Yeah. I, I, there was no point in the documentary where they were obviously attacking Christianity as a whole and no. saying every single Christian is this horrible person. The only time I can see how Paul and Morgan might have gotten that is when they started talking about Christian social media influencers. Uh, one of the people that was interviewed, which I think she was ex-quiverful, uh, she talked about how we're seeing this rise of Christian social media influencers, and there definitely seemed to be a negative connotation attached to that. Yeah. And all of the social media people that they showed on the documentary were conservative, evangelical, or fundamentalist Christians. Right. And there are Christian influencers out there that are like progressive Christians, yeah. like God is gray. Most Christians in the world are not actually those denominations either. So. Yeah. They didn't seem to specify that they're talking about conservative Christian social media influencers. And they just said Christian influencers altogether. Yeah. So I can see a little bit how Paul and Morgan might have gotten that from that, but I sure. don't think it was intentional. Yeah. Well, we need to rewind and, and tell them. And we are them. about to rewind. Um, but I also just want to say this is a, an agenda-driven documentary. You can make a documentary about anything acting like you know everything about a certain family, a certain person, a certain situation. And just like we have had so many videos made about us, made about our mannerisms, made about our marriage and our family, where the person making the video somehow knows everything. Somehow knows everything about us. That, to me was how oftentimes this documentary came across. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely true. There are so many videos out there about Paul and Morgan that aren't really addressing the things that they say, but instead of instead are kind of like speculating yeah. on, you know, their relationship and speculating about Morgan's mental health or they'll be like, "Oh, look, Morgan kind of like scooted away from Paul when he said that. That must mean that she's afraid of him. And like, there's a lot of speculation that goes on about yeah. Paul and Morgan specifically. Yeah. Um, that's, that's definitely true. And I do think that there was some speculation about Paul and Morgan in this documentary, but we'll talk about that later. Yeah. To say that maybe the primary drive behind this was this nefarious agenda just to misrepresent people based on nothing. I I would definitely disagree with that. Yeah, I mean, 100%. They, they agreed that, uh, you know, these things in the IBLP, like abusive things like that, need to be exposed. Yeah. And I think that this documentary did that did very that. well. Um, just the, the parts where it, uh, it might have reached had to do more specifically with Paul and Morgan, I think. Right, yeah. So while I don't agree with Paul's point there, I can't understand why he specifically, like he more than anyone else in the entire world actually, yeah, that, that would think sense. that. Yeah, it definitely makes sense. Um, so let's let's dive right in, Morgan. The story of how we came uh, to be on the show and then uh, the interviewing process that we had with the team. Yeah, we had a lot of you guys commenting and messaging us when you were watching it being like, did you guys know you were in this? Like, they're using your videos and stuff, blah, blah, blah. Or, why were you in this? It's about the IBLP. So, here's the story. We were reached out to uh, over a year ago, and I got an email saying they wanted us in this, they wanted to talk to us uh, and see what we could do. I actually ignored the email because I was like, 
we don't want to do that. Then they sent us messages on all three of our Instagrams and so, and another email, I believe. And so I was like, what do you think? Should we talk to them? Let's just do a Zoom call. So we did a Zoom call with them. They told us about the docuseries. This is what they told us. They said, we're going to talk about the IBLP but a lot of it's gonna be about like the Duggars, the Bates, the Platt, Platt or the, Plaths? The TLC big family. Big Christian families. And we're gonna talk about like reality TV show and how it pertains to Christians and Christian influencers. And that's where you guys would come in. We would love to just hear your all's experience of being Christian influencers. We would love to hear just how it's been, what you all have gone through um, and get your thoughts on Christians being in the world, the influencer world, online, TV, etc. And so we were like, hmm, interesting, okay. Still like, still cautious, but like yeah. this could be a really cool thing. Like yeah. this could be a really neat thing. So then they sent us over like the list of all the questions that they were going to ask. Um, and then I believe whether it was on the Zoom call or back and forth in emails, um, we were just kind of sharing like, look, we have a friend, Luke Parker. We don't want to be treated like that. We're not going to be on a show where like we look like total villains, whatever. And they were like, so you know the docuseries Lula Rich? That was actually a docuseries that we produced and that's exactly how we're wanting to do it with this one. Which we had watched that Amazon Prime docuseries um, and really enjoyed it. Thought it was super interesting. And I appreciated that docuseries because I felt like it was very much a 360 view of um, just like they interviewed the owners and gave them a voice. They were able to push back on things. They were able to stand their ground, you know. I, I still felt like that was, had some agenda driven, but right. because we're not fans of multi-level marketing, uh, it was easy for us to be like, yeah, you know, we agree. I'm kind of yeah. a little bit surprised that they're not, not, not cool with like, they're against yeah. multi-level marketing. Good. That good for you guys. That's cool. Yeah. That is a bit surprising. I would say that, uh, I'm sure that plenty of Mormons would watch the Lula Rich documentary and be like, this just tried to make Mormons look like, <laughs> you know, money hungry, exploitative you know, terrible, mm. immoral people, and they didn't allow us to present the true gospel that was revealed to Joseph Smith. It's like you that know? <laughs> wasn't the point of the documentary. Right. They do make a good point, though, that um, Deanna and I think her husband, Mark, the owners of LuLaRoe, they were given a lot of airtime um, in that documentary. And I think this documentary team that made um, Shiny Happy People, they did reach out to Bill Gothard and other people in the IBLP and they declined to speak. But there definitely was more of a, we're gonna interview all sides or feature all sides of this discussion in this documentary. And that wasn't really done in Shiny Happy People. Right. I don't think that there needed to be, especially when you're talking about victims of essay and yeah. abuse. I don't think we need to be giving airtime to abusers, um, but there was that difference between these two documentaries. I mean, when they're told that they're wanting to present a Christian perspective um, and, you know, Paul and Morgan know they have no connection to the IBLP in any way whatsoever, they're, they're probably, I could see why they would not expect to be painted as, as mm -hmm. bad guys when that's not yeah. how it's presented to them. So... Yeah. I can I can see I can empathize with them feeling like they were done dirty because the documentary, I mean, had Morgan say literally one thing and then yeah, really they just they just disappeared. They had a very very small like five minute thing about Christian influencers. It was definitely all about the Duggars and the IBLP. With with right. most of the agenda, but it still had a feel like you said it, it yeah. interviewed the so yeah they had people who were still doing that to this day being like I love it I enjoy it <laughs> sure, like sure, you know sure. whatever there, there was some some so we were like okay I mean if they really do let us just speak our experience and that's what it is like cool so that's what we agreed to we had no idea you guys how like 
that it was literally all about the IBLP. I didn't even know what the IBLP was, Institute of Basic Life Principles, until they reached out to us. Institute in Basic Life Principles. See, there we have it. Um, I didn't even know what that was until they reached out, and I had to, like, Google it, and I knew that the Duggars had a lot of kids, but I didn't realize they were, like, a part of a thing, whatever, a institute. Um, and so, like... We didn't, we were like, we don't know a lot about the IBLP, so we can't really, like, speak on that. And they were like, no, 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 you're going to be speaking about, like, what it is to be a Christian influencer. Blah, blah, blah. Like, well, and I, I, growing up, like, the, we I think it was good for them to tell the documentary team, like, hey, we don't know anything about this organization that you guys are going to be talking about. So we, you know, we don't have anything to say. Maybe it's best if we aren't featured in this or we aren't interviewed and then for the documentary team to be like oh no no don't worry we're talking about the Duggars and we're talking about the Bates and the Plaths and you know how you view them as Christian influencers I agree with them that that's not what was made yeah like that no. it was all about the IBLP and so I do feel like they were done dirty by the team like reassuring them that like they have they have a place and they they will have things to speak on when it comes to the documentary and like clearly like they had no idea what the IBLP was in right. the first place. They were clearly there to serve a certain purpose, which I'm sure we will discuss in in just a little bit. Yeah, we we touched the surface. Mm -hmm. My my family touched the surface of it, like but. There was, it was just very, very little. Yeah. And there were things like even talking to my parents before going on the show, they were like, oh, well, this was too extreme and this was too extreme mm -hmm. so forth. But I mean, yeah. there was a little, there was a little. Yeah. I actually want to go ahead and say that I am not speaking out of ignorance here when I'm talking about uh, fundamentalism. Um, I grew up avowedly fundamentalist, mm -hmm. uh, independent fundamental Baptist. We had people in our church that kind of flirted with some Bill Gothard stuff. But, I mean, the church itself was absolutely not in any way IBLP. Yeah. Um, totally separate from that. Uh, I was even homeschooled, and I still wasn't IBLP. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I get what Paul is saying when he's saying that his, his family kind of just, just touched it just mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, because, yeah, I, I guess I could say that my upbringing was was kind of, it, it touched it, but it didn't actually have really anything to do with it. It was just a, a somewhat adjacent space. Yeah. And, and, and that's, that's really all it was. Yeah. So what we agree to is not what was <laughs> created. Okay. Well, so <laughs> yeah, it sounds like what they mm -hmm. agreed to was not yeah. what was created. If we were to take them at their word and what they're describing happened actually did happen, which I feel like we have no reason to believe that they're not telling the truth about this. If they were just trying to save face, why would they wait till after the documentary dropped to say something? There are some fundy commentary channels that are kind of like saying that they might be lying about this whole story of how, of what the documentary team told them, which again, like why would they lie about that? And it's going into more speculation yeah, about that. I just, I don't know why they would have agreed to something that sounded like something that they clearly disagree with. Yeah. You know, why, why would they yeah, go exactly. in if they were told something? So, I mean, yeah, I've, I've been interviewed by documentary crews, um, about multi-level marketing companies, like, like a dozen times at least, I've made some documentary stuff. So uh, I don't know. This this seems entirely plausible to me. I feel like yeah, this is definitely. probably what happened. Um. So if we were to take them at their word, yeah, uh, what was created was definitely not what they were told it was going to be. So I do think that they were kind of done dirty. I think more now we we fast forward to sitting on the couch a week ago. Yeah. when the documentary dropped um so yeah let's just the, the raw emotions so we're sitting on the couch we start episode one and a little ways in and i've i've seen some people commenting to some of the stuff we've been posting on instagram sharing their thoughts on the documentary and sharing kind of a similar sentiment of this of like it didn't take long into the documentary into episode one and for sure in episode two where it's kind of like oof this is um, you know, and, and now let me say real quick, I, I'm not saying that there was nothing 
absolutely nothing good that came out of the documentary. Mm -hmm. I think bad actors should be exposed. I think that... Um, Meaning bad people. I didn't understand that phrase when he said that. <laughs> bad, bad people that are maybe masquerading as, as good people or as people of the Christian faith. The wolves and sheep clothing should be... They should be exposed. exposed. Victims. I, I will say that it wasn't about expo exposing bad actors or bad apples. It was about exposing this larger IBLP system, yeah. which gave power to these people to abuse others in the first place. Yeah, and they're also kind of saying, we should expose false Christians, you know? Yeah. And it, it's like, but it's not about whether or not they're right in their theology or if they're true Christians or not. It's about whether or not their actions are doing harm. Right. That's what we're yeah. trying to expose, and that's all. It doesn't have to do with theology. Right. I think their their theological lens has kind of clouded things for them with this one. Mm -hmm. Should be empathized with and heard. That's a good thing. This documentary, um, if there was some good elements in that regard, I, I'm just sharing, like, moving into the second episode, I'm thinking to myself, man, like, how how... Are they going to, to bring us in to balance out the extremism? Yeah. Like, it just felt like, man, they are just, like, going after this. And where where are we going to fit? Mm -hmm. And then suddenly we realize <laughs> where we're going to fit. <laughs> I mean, ultimately, we're going to fit as a hit piece of literally being lumped in with the IBLP, with extremism, with cultism. Mm -hmm. And here's a funny thing. Probably two months leading up to the doc to being asked to be in the documentary, something I don't know, three months, two months, whatever. We had made a video, and people that are fans of the channel probably saw it. When the Josh Duggar awful stuff broke, we made a video condemning Josh, condemning that situation, calling out the evils of it. Mm -hmm. And then what do you know? Like what happens? They put us smack dab in the middle of the episode where Josh Duggar exposed for all this evil and suddenly we were dropped in the <laughs> middle. Nope, here's a little here's segment on a little where infiltrating. They're, where they're saying, and here, the IBLP and the, the older people passing it down, now here is the younger generation that is continuing. They literally called it the continue, what is it, continuing? Yeah. This is the continuation of that extremism, of that the cult Same stuff. Book. So yeah, that is pretty much what happened. Um, they were brought up in the last episode of the series, in episode four, and there's four episodes in the in the show. And it was kind of at the climax of the show where they're talking about Josh Duggar and what he got arrested for, which if you guys don't know what he got arrested for, you can Google that because we can't really talk about it on YouTube. Yeah. Um, so they started, you know, talking about that. And then they started talking about the Joshua generation. And then Paul and Morgan were plopped in right after that. So it was kind of in a very weird point in the show to all of a sudden be bringing up these Christian social media influencers. They definitely were lumped in with the people they've been talking about previously. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But we'll get into how they did that just shot by shot and in just a minute. Dreamism of that. The cult Same stuff. Same book, new cover. Same book, new cover. That, that here's the new younger generation that is continuing. Yeah. They made no differentiation. Is that a word? Yeah. Um, between IBLP and just Christians who are not a part of that, who are just living life by the word of God. They. Just I'll say that uh, I somewhat agree but I, I would restate that as they made no, no differentiation between the IBLP and conservative evangelicals or they made no differentiation between the IBLP and other fundamentalist groups yeah and there's a there's a big difference a, there yeah. too they just lumped everyone in together they talked about the Joshua generation and like apparently were a part of that and like infiltrating politics and infiltrating schools and infiltrating the world the, the world. radicals the radicals <laughs> being sent out to infiltrate all these fears and we're sitting here like like what's what's the Joshua generation <laughs> yeah, we're just trying we're just trying to live godly lives yeah sorry, and suddenly no. we're the continuation of the radicals or the Joshua generation 
we, we're we, being trained by Jim Bob and Michelle Duggar <laughs> to go on and continue their and what, <laughs> job. So the main issue I had with how they included Paul and Morgan in this documentary is that they had Jen from Fundy Fridays. Um, they interviewed her and she made the statement that uh, Paul and Morgan and other Christian influencers are parroting the ideals of the older generation. And the documentary team immediately followed that up with a clip from an IBLP conference where a woman was talking about how she got in trouble with her husband because she wore pants and uh, yeah. he didn't want her wearing pants. And so she was like out from under his authority. Yeah. And that kind of makes this implication that that's the type of thing that Paul and Morgan believe in. Right. Especially right when the, when they do that and they show something where Morgan says the wife's role is to submit. And then she doesn't explain what she means by that at all. Or yeah, they, they, they don't, all they said they was uh, include that. The only thing they included of her saying was that the wife's role is to submit and submission is a choice that we make. Yeah. Um, and it was clear that she was like, going to continue on kind of clarifying what she meant by that. Yeah. But um, when you juxtapose it with those statements, yeah. with that shot, it looks like they are the continue. I don't even know if that's what Jen even meant to imply. I, I don't um, know. You know, so. I mean, it, she did say that they're the same book, different cover, which, I mean, it, that might have been taken out of context, but definitely in the show, it made it sound like, Mm. Paul and Morgan are the IBLP for the young generation. That's yeah. like definitely what was implied with that. Which is uh, way over generalization and way yeah. oversimplified. They kind of treated fundamentalism as this monolith, as though all fundamentalists agree on everything mm -hmm. and all fundamentalists agree with the IBLP. And that's just simply not the case. Yeah. The show seemed to really hit on this idea of submission, and that was something that the IBLP talked about. And they had this clip of Morgan talking about submission, and it was almost like a, here, she used the word submit. So that yeah. means that Paul and Morgan and the IBLP are the same thing. Because they, they both use that, use that one yeah. word. And there wasn't this further clarification that how Paul and Morgan think about submission is not how the IBLP yeah. thinks about submission. Now, the way that Paul and Morgan think about it, we still think is harmful. Yeah, we we still don't, don't agree like. with, we still think is problematic, um, but it's not the same thing. Yeah, I mean, the fact that Morgan was allowed by her husband to say, you know, I choose to submit. That is a radical difference mm -hmm. from the IBLP. I mean, if Michelle does not agree with Jim Bob, that doesn't matter. Jim Bob just yeah. says it and his word is law because he's the man. And no, a woman's role is not to choose to submit. She doesn't it choose just she, to submit. She has is, to submit or yeah. else she's worth nothing. Yeah. And that is, I mean, again, yes, we don't agree with what Paul and Morgan think about submission either. Yeah. But if you actually investigate into what they say about it, it's pretty clear that the IBLP would think that they are not even real Christians because they're not anywhere close to conservative yeah. or radical enough about that. Yeah. What I've gathered from watching their channel of how they think of submission is it's kind of more about Paul having this label as the leader. It's more about the label more than it has to do with what that looks like practically because from what it sounds like, they have more of a partnership where they talk things out and Morgan's able to bring her concerns to Paul and have those considered by him. Um, it does seem like in some instances, if they're having a disagreement and they're both just at odds, it seems like Paul does have, I guess, the authority to make the final decision about it. Yeah. But it seems like for the most part, they're talking things out together. It's not like... Paul can just make all the decisions for their family and Morgan has no input at all, which is how the IBLP sees right. submission. When we were conservative evangelical Christians, when we first got married, I think that we saw things very, very similarly to how Paul mm -hmm. and Morgan do. Now we, I mean, I did early in our marriage say, you know, I, I am not like the boss of you. I'm not in charge of you. You have like an equal say, that kind of thing. But 
I also would have affirmed the verses in the Bible that said the wife should submit to her husband. And it's just that I read that in a more flexible way. They clearly read that in a different way than yeah. the IBLP does. And just because they use the same word doesn't mean that they interpret it exactly the same way. Yeah. I'm kind of seeing this trend with the people that comment on um, fundies where they're kind of just treating it all like it's one thing, like it's all the same. Um, and what is fundamentalism in the first place. So a broad definition of what Christian fundamentalism is, is those Christians who believe in biblical inerrancy. So they take the Bible and everything described in the Bible as literally and think that it's a historical document and that the things that happened in the Bible really did happen and it wasn't just a metaphor. Mm -hmm. And then they also tend to push back against progressive ideas. Um, so that really is describing like a big group of people yeah. by with that broad definition. Right. There really is a lot of variation within fundamentalism itself. And I think that we need to be critiquing people for what they actually say, uh, rather than using how we might conceptualize fundamentalism to make assumptions about mm -hmm. other people. I think that that's just not as useful. Yeah. Yeah. I think the attitude that you're noticing there is something that I would call essentialism. So Paul and Morgan have already exemplified uh, essentialism several times in this. You know, people who do things that are bad, people who disagree with us theologically, people who are different than us, they are not real Christians mm -hmm. because they don't live up to, they don't, you know, contain the true essence, this indefinable characteristic or quality that makes them real Christians. And I think that people outside of Christian circles who don't believe that they don't engage in theology, they don't believe in any God or supernatural agents to back up their interpretation of Christianity, they still do the same thing. So, you know, yeah. true Christianity or true fundamentalism is this. That would be a, a way of engaging that same thing of mm -hmm. essentialism. It's this indefinable thing. But when I, when I see it, I know it. Right. But I think a more popular way of engaging in essentialism, especially when you are outside of Christianity, is to hear a verse or, or some kind of scripture quoted and assert that there is one real, true interpretation of, of this verse. You know, there's no other way that you can interpret it. So when she says submit, that means that that must mean you know, she can't say anything to her husband. She has no opinions of her own. She's not allowed to have her own bank account. She can't have her own credit card. She's not allowed to leave the house without yeah. him, things like that. And yeah, it can mean that. And for the IBLP, it does, it mean, does that. mean that. However, words, writing does not have one true immutable interpretation or meaning. Mm -hmm. The only way to back up the idea or ground the idea that words magically have one true meaning is to claim that God inspired the text. But if you don't believe that God inspired the text, you have absolutely no ground for saying this is the right interpretation of the text. Right. It goes completely out the window. Mm -hmm. So if you're if you're gonna say that, you know, the true interpretation of, of biblical teaching about submission is such and such, all right. Are you gonna back that up with proving to me that God exists? Because that's the only way that you can actually say there's one there's one interpretation right. of that. Mm -hmm. When Jen said that Paul and Morgan are parroting the ideals of the older generation, I agree that they probably are par somewhat parroting some older generation. They might be oh, yeah. repeating things that their parents have said or the Christian community that they're surrounded by have said. But there was just this very, very heavy implication in the documentary that they're parroting the IBLP specifically and almost as if Paul and Morgan and uh, Girl Defined and Nate and Sutton that they're like carrying on the torch for the IBLP and they are the IBLP but for young people and that's not the case at all. Yeah, it's just not true. And I, I don't think that Paul and Morgan would call themselves fundamentalists. I mean, Morgan has a tattoo that's visible in... <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like, just because she has a tattoo doesn't mean they're not fundamentalists. Yeah, that's also true. Um, I mean... Eh. 
technically under like the broad definition of fundamentalism. I'm pretty sure they believe in biblical inerrancy and all that kind of stuff. So I think that they would fall into that category. I think they'd be more comfortable with the term like evangelical. Yeah. But does that mean that they're carrying on the torch for specifically the IBLP, which is just a a, a branch of this broader fundamentalist entity? Yeah. No. no. <laughs> And all this is not to say that what Paul and Morgan say on their channel isn't harmful. It right. is harmful. But, like, I think we should meet them where they're at and actually criticize the things that they say instead of yeah. trying to insinuate that they have, like, this direct connection with this specific group that they don't have. Yeah, if we want to effectively fight religious harm, then we can't be so imprecise here mm -hmm. we have to be nuanced like you said meeting them where they're at is a good phrase if we ever wanted to sway people who think like paul and morgan to hopefully undo some of the harm that's there we can't treat them like they belong to a group that they just don't they're not going to yeah. listen to us and so in in order to effectively fight religious harm we have to do better than lumping people together when they they don't even identify as allies and i think that there is a danger in lumping all these people together in that they already have this uh, persecution complex where Paul and Morgan and those like them think that the world's out to get them. Yeah. And so when they see the situa this situation where they feel like they were misled and completely misrepresented in this documentary, that only feeds into this whole persecution narrative. And they'll think, oh, look, you know, this is just an example of the secular world out to get us. Yeah. And their followers are probably thinking the same thing. Yeah. Of here's the cult-like behavior. Here's where they've deviated from the word of God. But here's Christians that are choosing to stand on the word of God, rejecting that, but still embracing Christ-like biblical Christianity. Oh, no, there wasn't that. It was, we're all over here. Mm -hmm. Or you've deconstructed, like you said, mm -hmm. and now you're... Now you hate the faith, you hate religion, you hate God, you hate anyone who claims to be a believer in the word. That's Again, that is not at all <laughs> what was portrayed in the documentary. There, No one that was interviewed said that they hate Christianity. Yeah. That's just not true. I don't really know how they possibly got that. I mean, that that just comes from in-group protecting narratives from their own theology. You know, yeah. like any anybody who is speaking against you hates you and is filled with, you know, like these evil forces and they're being influenced by Satan and stuff like that. When really, no, I, people, people who are unbelievers don't automatically hate God, the God that they don't believe in, apparently. Yeah. And they don't hate believers either. I mean, we're here uh, while we oppose what Paul and Morgan, you know, try to put out into the world in a lot of ways. I definitely don't hate them. I actually no. sympathize with them a lot because we used to be in kind of a very similar place. Yeah. So and that, that's an in-group protecting bit of rhetoric there from Morgan for sure. And even though we're atheists and we talk about atheism a lot on this channel, we're not out to destroy Christianity as a whole. What we do want to do is call out objective harm that stems from um, cr some Christian beliefs, but yeah. we're not out to uh, get rid of Christianity as a whole. I actually think that that would not be the best thing. We have Christian viewers of our channels that support what we do, and we support them because we don't see them doing anything wrong. Yeah, you know, we have Christian friends that we love and we have no reason to try to convert deconvert them, de -convert or de them or them, whatever, because yeah. we don't hate all Christianity or all Christians or God or anything like that. It's a lot more complicated than, than that. Mm -hmm. I hate those people. <laughs> That's sure what it felt like to me. You guys, you know, can decide You're out how to destroy those types of people. You've created entire YouTube channels and TikToks to destroy people that live like that. <laughs> and, and that's where I was going to go with, so let's look at the, the sources, is that what you call them? The, yeah, the whatever, yeah. Different people the being... The experts that they interviewed. The experts, the different people being interviewed, and, and I, I, I'm not... <laughs> it was pretty quickly that I realized, oh man, like, many, most of these people are, like we were just sharing, like, they're no longer Christians. 
they they're no true. they're no longer Christians according to your very narrow yeah. theological definition of what true Christianity is. But they would all but many of them would define themselves as Christians. It kind of seems like to me that Paul and Morgan might think that their specific brand of Christianity is the only thing that exists, yeah. and they're they're not aware of the. Uh, vast amounts of variety within Christianity. Uh, I, I think that they're aware that there are a lot of different denominations and a lot of different things that call themselves Christians. I just think that they think, well, that's just all fake. And you can't possibly be a Christian unless you agree with us. Yeah, uh, they might. I think they are aware that like other denominations exist, but I still think that they, th they think that they're a uh, brand of Christianity is like the mainstream and that that's the majority uh, in the U S or even in the world. And they're not aware of the fact that they're actually kind of a minority. Yeah. They're a min minority in the world. And, and historically we've talked about this before their version of Christianity didn't even exist until the last couple hundred years. So yeah. <laughs> it's, it's funny. They, they would not be identifiable as Christians to Christians like 500 years ago or yeah. a thousand years yeah. ago or, you know, 1800 years ago. I mean, fundamentalism didn't come about till the 19th century. It's like actually really, really new. <laughs> and like specifically just America and the UK. And then it finally ended up spreading outside of that. But it's like this tiny little niche thing. Yeah. Are struggling in life. And, and I, I want to be careful of like, there were. So he said that everyone that interviewed was struggling mm -hmm. in life. Um, I'm pretty sure if you're sharing your story of how you were abused, you're probably going to look a little bit sad. Yeah. That doesn't mean that your your entire life is horrible and you're like so upset about where you are in life. Like that, that's not what that is. I can't say for sure that this is where this is coming from, but I have seen this many times and, and this is how I used to think about it. So I'll say this. Uh, there's an idea within conservative Christianity that, you know, if you talk about having disagreements with your former faith or you, you talk about any kind of doubts or any kind of change in belief whatsoever, anything other than 100% steadfast belief and total confidence in what you've been taught, then you're struggling and you're, <laughs> yeah, you know, you're, you're so sad and like this is such a terrible existence. And it's, again, I don't know if that's where Paul's coming from on this, but this is an idea that Christians are taught so that they will be scared of questioning. Right. If you if you think that not having 100% confidence means that you're just a sad sack and terribly depressed and you just can't go on anymore, then yeah, you're not going to question your authority figures. You're not going to leave the yeah. faith. I mean, that's what we were told when we were Christians, that if we ever left Christianity that our entire life would be in shambles and that our marriage would dissolve and all of this kind of stuff. Which was all lies. Yeah. None of that happened. Yeah. <laughs> They've rejected Christianity altogether. Or I don't know where they all are on a journey, but it was quick that it was like, wow, like these people. He said he doesn't know where they all are on their journey, but they've also stated multiple, multiple times that everyone was not a Christian. Gotta pick one. Yeah. Paul and Morgan, I know we're kind of like slightly defending you, I guess, in this video, but you guys do tend to contradict yourself a lot. So um, editing might be good or like Morgan did for the first part of this video, writing down your thoughts so you're not like contradicting things that you literally just said. Try to have a little bit more empathy for people. I, I've, I've yeah. seen them do a good job of you know, they recognize they didn't have enough empathy for people and then they're called out on it and they actually are like, oh, sorry about that. So they're totally capable of it. Um, I know this is your theological view, uh, but it probably would be good to allow some complexity into your opinions on this stuff. Realize that uh, people's thinking, people's journeys are more complicated than the very concise and very simple narratives that can fit into a sermon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, it, and it's, uh, I think it's very insulting to people to, to insinuate that, you know, because they don't seem to agree with you theologically 100% that that means all of these really terrible things about them. So give that some thought, please. Yeah. Uh, I, I just some of the IBLP ex IBLP that they interviewed the the experts the Fundy Fridays uh, Fundy Fridays Jen who was an expert on us 
Wow. Somehow she's an expert on us because she an makes a one hour long plus creepy video about us. <laughs> um, but the, I, I was just like, man, I thought we were going to get a well-rounded view mm -hmm. of the sources. Uh, but you have people that to me are actually the fringe on the other side. They're trying to make Christians look like fringe extremists lumping us all in with IBLP. Trying to make Morgan and I... Girl Define, Nate and Sutton, these Christian TikTokers, they're trying to lump us all in, which if you watch that part, literally, <laughs> it's just showing little five second clips of intense things that have been said in a video. Which let me say something really quick. I am not mad about the clips that they used uh, of us. I'm not mad about like the parts of the interview that they used. The fact that they only used, you know, two minutes of the four and a half hours that we filmed is annoying, but whatever. I'm not mad though at what they chose to, to use. I stand by everything that I said in every little clip that they played. That's not what I'm mad or annoyed about. I'm upset and frustrated at how just badly and disgustingly they lied to us, which, you know, whatever it is what it is but yeah people were like you said what you said and i'm like yeah i said what i said that's not what i'm mad about at all in those clips <laughs> to address something that paul said uh you know they only represented the other side the fringe the this the that i mean only again only through your very narrow theological narrative or lens do people who have left a cult and are now talking about it who represent a spectrum of Christianity represent extremists or fringe <laughs> yeah. on the other side? Um, also, the people who were there speaking about their experiences were not the ones who were in charge of editing the documentary. The people who were in charge of editing the documentary, the people who were in charge of your right. interview and portraying your story are not the same people that were featured in the documentary. Mm -hmm. People who were featured in the documentary, I don't think deserve blame for that. How it's they certainly were featured, not yeah. certainly not the victims that were were talking about their stories. Uh, we're talking about the documentary crew. If you want to be mad at them, I think it's pretty valid. Yeah, uh, right. based on that they they were misled. Yeah. Um, but yeah, differentiation there. <laughs> so they played yeah, and then they literally did like the like yeah. showing just lots of different. <laughs> Uh, radical Joshua generation, mm -hmm. uh, far right extremist Christian homeschooling, blah, blah, blah. The documentary definitely did imply that Paul and Morgan and the other Christian influencers are part of this thing called the Joshua generation because they talked about it right before they started talking about social me media influencers. And then they followed up that segment with a guy saying, and this is the Joshua generation. And I'm not sure if people are fully aware, but the Joshua generation, at least in how the documentary was referencing it, is this organization that trains um, Christian homeschoolers to get in, like heavily involved in politics to basically try to turn the U.S. into this like Christian nationalist state. Yeah. And while I'm sure Paul and Morgan like, you know, vote Republican or vote Christian or whatever. They're not part of this very organized, strategic yeah. um, organization that is literally training kids in um, to politics, basically, to infiltrate the government. As far as I know, they're not part of that. Yeah, so I was I mean, kind of confused by that whole thing. But I'm sitting here thinking their sources are fringe on the other side. Mm -hmm. They seem hurt they seem confused they seem like their lives they're struggling radical voices and like you mentioned this um you know they, they're given this big spotlight to fundy fridays who represents this reddit hate group of trolls mm -hmm. that hate christians and they're well, she's one of their big sources I'm, I'm just saying it's weird we're getting a pretty good feel for the agenda of this documentary Again, I, I really don't know how they're getting that, like, everyone interviewed was struggling in life. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they come across hurt, it's because they were they're hurt. talking about their abuse. They were hurt. Yeah. Like, that's probably why they seem like that. Right. Issues I feel with this docuseries was that, you know, they were trying, you know, people look at it and they're like, they were exposing the IBLP. They were giving a voice to the victims. They were, you know, calling out Bill Gothard and Jim Bob Duggar and the Duggars in general. And like, in a sense, yes, they were, but also this docuseries was lumping every 
person who thinks that homeschooling is a good thing, every person that thinks that going to church is a good thing, everything, everyone that thinks that an order of uh, leadership is a good thing is extremist, fringe, terrible, like awful people. I, I don't know that I would go that far. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't hear them specifically say oh, like homeschooling is so. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say that they were like lumping in all homeschoolers or every single person that goes to church into this category. I do think that they were kind of lumping all fundamentalists together. And they were lumping specific Christian influencers that they showed on screen in with the IBLP. Yeah. But to say that they're lumping all Christians to get, I don't, I don't think it went that far. No. And that's just not true. Like IBLP took, you know, submission and ran with it and took it way off into the weeds. They took from a little piece of the Bible and ran with it and used it for control and abuse. And that's not okay. And that's See, that's kind of what we're talking about. The, yeah. the way that Paul and Morgan think about submission is not the same as the IBLP and they obviously disagree with it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's just like a lot of over simpli simplification and just, yeah, like we've said, kind of lumping all fundamentalists together and acting as though fundamentalism is this like monolithic entity and that they all agree about everything. Yeah. Healthy mm -hmm. biblical way. And there is a healthy submission and I'm glad they left that part in, even though it's like to make you look like, oh, <laughs> right. Morgan submits. We're, we're going to leave this in there. It's like, no, I'm, I'm glad that they left that in there. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, all of these good experiences, it's just gaslighting the millions mm -hmm. of Christians that are doing it right or that are trying their best and doing pretty stinking good. Yeah. But no, you're going to turn out like Josh Duggar. You're going to turn out like the Duggar situation. You're going to turn out like Bill Gothard and all of the th things that he got wrong. You're going to be right there, and that's the way you're going to end up. No, I reject that. I do agree with um, Paul there that I think the documentary definitely like made this implication that they m might end up like Josh Duggar or that their beliefs ultimately will lead to doing the same things that Josh Duggar and all these other horrible people did. And I think that that is a stretch. Yeah. Slippery slope. Yeah, sure. yeah, it's a, exactly. It's a slippery slope. I mean, that's not to say that their beliefs don't lend themselves to some abuse. There, that definitely is a thing. Yeah. But is it on the level of this cult, which it, the IBLP is a cult that was run by this predator, and all of this essay was going on? I don't think so. I mean, I don't know for sure, but I, I don't have reason to believe that. Like, okay, let me let me examine how, how I was raised, even if maybe I didn't, uh, we as a family didn't embrace all these IBLP things, like, we still had strict modesty standards, we had strict dating standards, we believed and really lived out how the Bible talks about so-and-so, we were homeschooled. So I'm like sitting here examining things, thinking through things, and even asking myself, okay, were, were we extreme? And then I'm like, but where are areas where Christians should be extreme and will be seen as extreme by non-Christians? Mm -hmm. And the Bible talks about it. It talks about being hated by the world. It talks about being a stench in the nostrils of certain people who don't like the gospel. And so I'm like, where, where do I just want to embrace, if you want to call it extremism, Mm -hmm. Where do I want to embrace it and actually just wear it proudly? Mm -hmm. Pride Month, baby. Uh, <laughs> kind of gross, that little Pride yeah. Month joke. Um, I think that was unnecessary. This is what happens, though, when this is the thought process that gets triggered in yeah. the minds <laughs> of people who are not extremists, like Paul. Yeah. Like, huh, you're going to call me an extremist even though I'm not? Fine. I'll just, you know, I'm not even going to care what anybody right. thinks. I'm just going to do what I'm going to do and stop examining it at all. Okay, so our final thoughts here. Um, I think that if they were to make a documentary about Christ like conservative Christian influencers and how their views might lend itself to abuse, I, I think that could be an interesting an interesting thing. I think that'd be worthwhile, yeah. Um, but this whole implication that they're on the same level as a like cult with a predator as its leader, 
um, I think that that was kind of dishonest in the way they represented that. And counterproductive. And counterproductive, to Ultimately yeah. combating religious harm, which is the point, right? Yeah. And I would have maybe not even had a problem with them bringing up Paula Morgan in the documentary if they had done so in a different place and not made this, like, direct connection between the IBLP and them. Maybe if they had said like, oh, here's these other fundamentalists that also have these harmful ideas that are like adjacent to the IBLP or have some similarities with the IBLP and like we should be watching them and critiquing them. I probably would have been fine with that. Yeah. Yeah, if they if they said, you know, there are other forms of fundamentalism or other forms of conservative Christianity that are harmful and, you know, they might say things like this. They're not the IBLP, but we should still watch out for something like yeah. that. Yeah, I would have agreed with that. Yeah. So, guys, let us know what your thoughts are about this. Do you agree with us? Do you disagree? Um, it's possible that we're wrong about this and that Paul and Morgan do have a larger connection to the IBLP than we're realizing. Um, that's always possible. So let us know what your thoughts are down below. Thank you so much for watching and a huge thank you to my patrons who help make these videos possible. If you like this video, please be sure to subscribe and ring the bell. If you'd like to follow me on social media, my Instagram is Taylor underscore the underscore antibot and my Twitter is the antibot. If you'd like to consider supporting this channel financially, a link to my Patreon will be down in the description and I'll see you all in the next one. Say bye. <laughs>